Welcome my dear friends. Welcome to Luminous. My name is Diana Ingle and I'm from New Zealand. I live in Christchurch and I'm the National Chairperson of Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Today I'm going to be sharing about the unconditional love of God. I've chosen a scripture today as a start for this talk. It's 1 Corinthians 13:13, 13, 13, and the greatest of these is love. I've recently been teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit from 1 Corinthians 12, which you might be familiar with. The gifts that are mentioned are the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, faith, tongues, prophecy, healing, miracles. You will be familiar with these gifts, but I really believe that the most wonderful gift of all is the gift of love. I've experienced over and over again the supernatural power of God with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to see people getting set free from spiritual and emotional bondage. But I've found that without love and the supporting love of a Christian family, even a church family, that people will not grow into the fullness of what God has for them. In John 4, 8, it tells us that God is love. I believe the deepest human need is for love. We all desire to be loved and accepted just as we are, don't we? It's a great thing to be loved unconditionally. Unfortunately, many of us don't experience this in our lives. And often we've been hurt in our childhood from wounds of neglect or abuse. And this makes us have gaps in our ability to give and receive love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, it says, love is patient, love is kind, Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It is not irritable or resentful. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, hopes all in all things, and endures all things. When I was a young and cynical teenager, I really didn't like the scripture. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that anyone could love like that. And um, I used to scoff about it and I would think, how unrealistic is that? How can anybody love like that? I realize now that this was coming from my own woundedness at that time. My heart had become hardened and I had trouble believing in love or even receiving it. You might be the same. I'm gonna tell you a, a story about how I got to know God's love. When I was about 18, I was diagnosed with a tumour and my friends made me go along to a healing meeting where a man called Bill Sabritsky was preaching a message. And in the middle of his message, he stopped and he said, I don't normally pray for people during my message, but today I'm going to pray for people with lumps in their bodies or tumours. So he invited us all up the front and I went up there, I was very nervous and a bit embarrassed and I went up and I was miraculously healed of my tumour. But the most beautiful thing was that I stood there and I said, God, if you really love me, please heal me. And this beautiful warmth flowed all over my body. It was like someone was pouring hot, warm oil all over my body and I felt so loved. And I realised that God loved me in that moment and that he healed me. It was the most beautiful experience of my life and began a journey of love of God and enjoying his love for me. 1 John 4, 16 says, God is love and those who abide in love abide in him and God in them. So it's because this love comes to abide in us that we can love others. I learned this through another experience. There was a girl that I knew and she was very difficult and many people tried to help her. But she seemed to like to test people by rejecting them and arguing with them. So I prayed for, for God's wisdom of how to help her. I prayed and the Lord showed me that she, what she really needed was to be assured of love and just for me to love her. So I learned to pray and ask God for his love for her every day. And every day I had contact with her, I would just be loving and one day she got very angry with me and was yelling and screaming. And I said to her, it doesn't matter what you say, 
for what you do, I'm still going to love you. And she broke down and cried, and that was the beginning of her healing. It was a very beautiful experience to learn how God loves people, even when they're being very difficult. And he loves us like that as well. So because we have these wounds, the greatest need we have is to receive this love from others. It's God's love dwelling in us that gives us the supernatural grace to love people with his unconditional love. He loves us just as we are. He wants to restore our identity as children of God and as brothers and sisters. John, 1 John 3 1 says, See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 1 John 4.11 says, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. I think I'll read that again, 1 John 4.11. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. I have seen this beautifully in action in our Catholic charismatic young adults community in Christchurch, New Zealand. Our theme of our community is to know the unconditional love of God the Father and to share that unconditional love with one another. It's very beautiful to see young people coming into our community and have many different wounds or needs from their past and they come into our community and there's a culture of love. And during the time that they're with us, it might be six months or it might be a year, the love that they experience transforms them. It fills in all the gaps in their life and it's that love of God that we believe in for ourselves and that others can experience in that community. It's life-changing. And many young people go off from our community into full-time ministry for the Lord or into service in the community. God's love is the most powerful force in the universe. And by the Holy Spirit, he dwells in us. God's love comes to fill all the gaps in our lives, to heal us. It builds us up and transforms us into who we are, who he's created us to be. He loves us every day. The greatest gift truly is love. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and God is love. In New Zealand, I started and run a inner healing ministry where we pray for people for healing of their traumas of their childhood and different things they've experienced in life which have damaged them emotionally and psychologically. Maybe you've experienced that yourself. Jesus' love is so powerful where we pray with people Quite often I'm overwhelmed with God's love for that person. It doesn't matter what they're telling me, if they're telling me something that they've done themselves which is terrible, or something terrible that's happened to them. I have this amazing experience of feeling God's love, overwhelming love for that person, which is so strong, I feel like it's coming through me and pouring out onto that person. And I hear so many sad stories or difficult stories, and what has always amazed me is I never feel shocked and the first time it happened someone was telling me something really shocking. I kept waiting for the moment that I would show it on my expression or my body language but I felt so calm and peaceful. And this is that unconditional love of God in action that I've been speaking about. We have people come to us who have been abused physically or sexually or emotionally or psychologically. And it's amazing to see how this affects people's ability to receive God's love. Many people struggle to experience the Father's love because they've been disciplined very harshly by their parents and often by parents who have said things to them like, God's watching you, you're a naughty child, you're going to go to hell. Things like that, which have given that young child 
a really wrong impression of who God really is and what his nature is like. God is perfectly loving and perfectly kind. Like that scripture that describes what love is, that's really the description of God's character, that he's always patient, always kind, always loving. And that's, that's who he is. He doesn't punish us as we deserve. In fact, one of God's names means mercy. And the translation for that in the Bible literally means loving kindness. So the loving kindness of God overwhelms his judgment. To be merciful means that you have the power to judge or punish someone, but you choose not to because your love for them is, is so great. It overwhelms your judgment. So that's the beautiful, loving nature of God. And quite often we find that as we pray for people and we invite Jesus into these scenes from their childhood where they've been hurt or abused, especially quite often by family members or relatives, that Jesus comes into these memories with his healing love. And I like to refer to that as Jesus' anti-venom. It's where they've been hurt. It's like the snake has bit them. And there's this venom that goes into them and they believe wrong things about themselves and about others and lies come into their life that they believe for the rest of their lives. And this affects all their relationships, their work, their abilities to trust, all kinds of things. But Jesus comes into those memories with his loving kindness and it's like an anti-venom, as I said. It's, all, it's miraculous. It's like watching Jesus in the Bible, like I'm watching him in a gospel, walking along and stopping and healing a person here and healing a person there. And he comes and heals that person. And I often um, begin to weep because I'm so overwhelmed by watching the love of God transforming a person in front of me. And they feel and experience that love so powerfully. In fact, recently uh, someone was asked what they liked most about the prayer ministry. And they said it was that they began to know how much Jesus really loved them every day of their lives. And for me, that's the most beautiful fruit of that ministry of nothing else. If they know Jesus loves them, then that's a really beautiful and special thing. So now I'd like to pray for all of you out there who are watching this program for any hurts or wounds that you have that need the love of God poured into them. So I just invite you to just close your eyes and to open your heart to the Lord. And I'm just going to pray a prayer for you now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love your children so much that you sent Jesus to die for us. And, and not only did you give us the gift of salvation, but your salvation includes healing. So we thank you now for your healing love to pour into the hearts of everybody who's listening to this program and into all those wounds that they've experienced as children especially and that you would begin a beautiful work of complete wholeness in their lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray to you to bless Shalom TV, to bless the organizers, their families, all the collaborators. Inspire them with the spirit of wisdom to see what's to be done, courage to overcome obstacles, the generosity to sacrifice themselves for Shalom, and the realization that they're working for you, for the gospel, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them, keep them close to you and to each other. And so I now I pray for all the Shalom viewers. I pray that the Holy Spirit comes down on them, that God blesses them, blesses their family, keeps them united, that they experience the presence of God, of Jesus, in their homes and in their lives. And so I bless you with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you always. God bless you. Keep well. Always love Jesus.